Hi everyone, Kent Larson here from Smart House Electric and today's video is about how does a choke ballast work and why do you want to know that? Um, well, two-thirds of tanning bits out there is using it, uh, that kind of ta uh, ballast and um, by understanding how it works you're going to be able to troubleshoot it like a pro. So let's get down to it. All right, let's first introduce some of the components here. And um, here we go. Here is our ballast. Uh, this guy here is an iron core with a whole bunch of wires winded around it. Um, and that creates like basically an electrical break because of alternating current uh, once getting into a spool like this, this guy here is going to act like basically like a giant resistor. That type of resistance being created there is called an impedance. So it also has another function in it. It's going to be the one that creates the high voltage uh, spike that, um, that we need in order to start a fluorescent lamp. So, but we need some more help to do that. And to for that, we have a starter. This type here is called a glow bottle starter. And the reason is that inside is a small neon lamp. And next to that neon lamp in parallel, there is a bimetal switch. And together, these will um, create a bridge that's going to uh, preheat the cathodes of the lamp. Let's bring in the lamp. Our other component here. And, um, all right. So here we have a little, a little fluorescent lamp. And here at each end, each pin, each pin here, um, a cathode, something that goes inside of here, uh, made out of tungsten uh, at the surface. Um, it's called a cathode and basically one prong is connected to one side of that cathode and then it goes back into the other prong. So a little circuit inside of here that can be used to heat up the lamp and we'll get back to that later and that happens on both ends so you have a cathode um on each on each end where you have a connecting point for for each side of that cathode so more on that in a in in uh, just shortly then of course you're gonna need some lamp holders to hold this to make the connectivity to these pins on the lamp. And lastly, to make it easy for us today uh, to show this concept, I picked out a separate um, starter uh, socket. And um, most of the time, it will be something like this where one of the lamp holders is already connected with the starter base so it's one big component but uh, once you see it with these components it will make also a lot more sense how this one is interconnected let's wire all this good stuff together so i mounted these lamp holders straight on my fluorescent lamp uh, just to make it a little easier for this setup here um, so let's first mount what we call our back feed so let's take our L2 here and connect the blue wire and connect that to one side of the uh, start the uh, sorry the lamp holder down here we will take the other 
hot lag here and connect that to a ballast. Now, on the same side as the blue wire, this is not impaired. Um, once you get into these ones here, typically it's good to stay on the same side, like so. But in this case here, where we have a loose um, starter base, it doesn't matter really. But let's just keep good order and keep these on the same side. And so we're going to connect that to our ballast. So now our power, one power leg here, is serial connecting our ballast into this side of the lamp. Let's connect our starter. We do that. On the other side, of our lamp socket here. Just need one more piece of wire here. We're gonna take that out of the other side of the starter and place that on the other side of that lamp holder. So now you see we got our starter in between these two points here we got our ballast in series here with the power coming in on this side and we got our back feed from the other hot leg going to the other side of the lamp okay so now what happens, if we engage some power on here, power will flow through this guy here. It's going to lead power through it, and it's going to light up the little lamp that's inside. And that's going to keep on lighting until the little bimetal that's inside of there is going to say, it's warm enough now, I'm going to disconnect. And so that's what this guy does. So it's going to lead power in the beginning. And what that's going to do is that that will create, remember we talked about those cathodes in here that was connecting one side of the lamp to the other on, on each side. So there's a little piece of tungsten treated metal in here basically like a tiny almost like a little coil of tungsten and power is going to run through the ballast in through here through the cathode and it's going to have a closed circuit now because this one is leading electricity our starter is leading electricity through here and through the cathode over here. And why is it doing that? That's because that we are preheating the gas and that's going to make it easier for the electrons to go through the gas from one side to the other. The warmer the lamp is, the lower the resistance is. So the easier the electrons can go from one side to one side. Which <clears throat> I quickly want to uh, bring up then. It says 100 watts here. That's what the ballast is designed for to limit. It's going to limit the power to the lamp. Because the lamp, as it goes warmer and warmer, it's going to be easier and easier for electrons to flow from one side to another. So if the ballast is not there, it's going to blow up the lamp. It's going to burn out the lamp. And so that's why the, the ballast is in incredibly important. So 
The moment, though, is that this bimetal in here says, well, it's hot enough for me to disengage. So it's going to disconnect here in that moment. And what that will do is that the magnetic field that been, has been created inside of here from having power run through it, it's going to collapse. And that's going to cause a spike in voltage. So the starter from disconnecting in this case is going to create a spike from our ballast. And that spike is going to be so high that it's going to travel through the lamp and start the lamp. Hopefully, if it doesn't, if the light lamp is too cold, let's say that it's in a you, that your salon is kind of cold or it's in a basement, it's a light down there working as a light fixture. The, the This circuitry will try and do it once again because it, it failed and now this will cool down just enough that it will connect the bimetal switch again and start up the lamp and start the whole process up, uh, uh, over again creating a circuitry going through these cathodes warming them up that's what you can see when these are glowing red at the ends that's the starter being con connecting the circuit through there and the moment that that disconnects, that also means that there is no connection from one side to the other for an a easy connection through the cathodes and they're going to stop glowing. So if you have a strong glow and the lamp doesn't never start, uh, start, you can have a bad lamp, but most likely you're looking at a bad starter. Which also brings me to that it's important that you change your starters accordingly. And for big VHR bits, 160 watts, I'll say at this point, because the quality is not what it used to be, replace these guys every time, every relamp. And for 100 watt, 120, every second time. And so this is how the system works. Uh, so the ballast simply, with the starter, cre creates this starting uh, process. So the starter creates a circuitry in the beginning that preheats the lamp. And the moment that disconnects, that's going to force this ballast to create a spike in voltage. It's also called an inductive kick. And that will be strong enough to travel from one side to the other inside the gas, unless the tube is very cold. But the initial start that you just did might just have warmed the gas up enough that it will start the second time. And it might have to do several of those. So if you have a really cold uh, environment for these kind of choke ballast fluorescent lights, it might need several before it starts. So this is all well and good. This inductor though creates something, this ballast uh, is also, what it does is that it creates what's called an inductive load on the power. So that we, that's not very desirable because it's going to create a lot of uh, waste as far as our current goes. The machine was going to pull a lot of power that's just going to go up into heat if we don't do anything about that. We need that process for running the lamp. But as far as our consumption side on the power, it's bad. So the way to do away with that is by using a capacitor. So this is something that's not directly in the lamp circuit. You could put a whole bunch of little capacitors into a tanning bed so you have a capacitor for each lamp. But that's also that's a lot of little capacitors 
So it's cheaper to just to take a fewer big ones and uh, or a group of them and just simply connect them so that you have let's say here we have L1 and L2 and just connect them on each side of um, of this capacitor and that will even out that relationship is this is also what's called uh, phase compensation and so lastly what I just want to show is how this looks in a diagram so that it's not too intimidating how do we go all right here we go so uh, let me see here here's the capacitor the sign for capacitor and you can see how that's um, on the power side where the ballast comes in into the ballast and then the other side is connected um, let's see here like this and and actually going on the opposite side that was a blue wire here in the circuit so you see it just creates like a uh, a uh, it, it creates that capacitance between the two power legs essentially so it's not like in series with the lamp or something fancy like that it's simply just there to compensate for the inductive load of the ballast there's a, a an unwanted thing for the overall performance so this is it um i hope you like this video and um uh, if you do please subscribe to my channel and please comment as well i would love that and and if there's anything you would like me to um, explain as far as these tanning bits goes and electrical theory in general um, is maybe not everything I can explain, but I'm... but anyway, thank you for watching and uh, hopefully I'll see you again.